Good morning and welcome to this first Friday of 2023. And I am so happy that you are here. And if you are not here live, you can watch the replay after later. I know that is in uh, I'm in Washington. It's 10 a.m. and probably are working or uh, busy. <laughs> and today um, I want to talk about tracking, tracking your food, tracking methods, uh, some benefits of tracking, and different ways of tracking. I'm not gonna go in depth in this. There are so many ways that we can track our food intake, but I'm gonna give you some tips in the methods that my clients and myself we use and why why the benefits about tracking and also stay to the end because all today i'm gonna make one of my super high protein smoothies this is a creamy mango smoothie you don't want to miss this one because it's really really good super easy to make i think we have one two three four five ingredients five six ingredients and you can make it in in two minutes so if you are busy in the morning and you are not like a breakfast person or you don't eat breakfast because you are always you know rushing to get out of the door and go to work or take the kids off to school this is a great way to start your morning morning with all the macronutrients carbs fats and proteins and feel your best so i am elena rivera galaz i'm a nutrition coach personal trainer and master health coach and I help my clients to build a plan that gives them long-term results without dieting, without starving themselves, and without exercising for hours. There's a better way. And I'm, I, 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 before I start talking about tracking, I am super excited. I've been working so hard for I don't know how many months already to put together the method that I use with my clients, my one-on-one -on -one clients. Now I have created an online program, group program, for uh, women that is called Macros and Habits. On January 16, I'm gonna be sending emails and, and posting about what is Macros and Habits and, and, and who needs to join this group uh, for now. And this group is gonna be a beta program, meaning that is the first time that I'm gonna launch this program. And I'm gonna offer this program with a huge discount to the first 10 women that join the wait list. Uh, a huge discount. I never want to do this ever again, but in, in, in exchange, I want your feedback. I want to know and I want to build this program the, the, in, in a way that fits what you are looking for. If you are a woman who is stuck, overwhelmed, who has tried so many things, who is constantly on that dieting mindset, is tired of trying things and starving yourself, depriving yourself, cutting off uh, whole foods, group foods, this program is for you. Macros and Habits, 10 weeks, and I'm going to be live every single week with you. We are going to use nutrition, knowing your macronutrients, exactly how much your body needs for your unique, uh, unique needs to see long-term results. We are going to use exercise. I'm going to be programming and designing all the workouts that you are going to see, all the videos every week. And behavior change, because if we want last long-term results, we need to work on the mindset. We need to identify triggers, food triggers, behavior triggers, the self-sabotage. We need to identify obstacles, things that are holding you back and break those <laughs> bad habits and create positive habits again to see long-term results. So it's coming soon. If you are interested, I can put the link uh, so you can first thing enjoy my Facebook private group that is free. It's called Macros and Habits. And uh, oh, I, can, I could be talking about this because this is like my baby. I'm creating my baby with so much work, tears and, 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 and love. <laughs> so let's start talking about tracking methods. Have you ever tracked your food? What are your beliefs ab about tracking? There's so many opinions there. Some people love it. Some people is 100% against of tracking. But let's just start 2023 with a fresh start. I was reading this article about precision nutrition, about um, approaching 2023 with you know your uh, New Year's resolutions or New Year's fresh start. Maybe you have tried before tracking, didn't work for you, you feel like it's too much work, it's overwhelming, and you said, it's not for me. So let's 
reframe that and let's start with a different mindset about tracking. You don't have to track your whole life. I want to say this first, but at the beginning, if tracking is like you want to save money to go to a trip, you want to know where your money is going. What do you do? You write down all your expenses and then with that data, you know, and you see, you can make a plan to save money to go to that trip. So you have a goal you track because you have a specific goal with food is the same. You have a goal. You want to get healthier, stronger. You want to lose some weight. So tracking is going to give you the whole picture, the whole information, all the data that you need. And now with that data, we make a plan. So tracking is not the goal. Tracking is a tool that we use to reach our goal and tracking also is going to, you're going to be able to see if you have any nutrient deficiency. There are so many apps right now that tell you exactly how many fiber you are consuming every day, sugar, proteins, carbs, fats. You are not going to be relying on your feelings. If every time I start working with a client, most of the time they tell me, I feel like I'm eating healthy. I feel like I'm exercising correctly. I feel, I feel, and it's not that I don't believe it. That was me before. I feel like I was eating super healthy. When I start tracking, I realized that for instance, my protein was super low. That's the first thing that I work on in building my protein intake. And it was like a life changing, like before and after. So when I start tracking, it wasn't easy. The first time that I track, I tried for a few days, the, the, my fitness pal, and then I said, oh, this is not for me. And then a few months later, after trying other methods, trying dieting and dieting and dieting and encouraged by another coach, I said, I want to give it a try. Oh my goodness, once I learned how to use it, it took me five minutes a day to track my food intake. And again, you don't have to track the rest of your life. You, the good thing about tracking, you can be super flexible. You can add the foods that you like because you can start building your plan with those foods that you like and then building the rest around that. You don't have to be guessing, oh, I am eating enough protein and I'm eating enough carbs. I'm having the healthy fats that my body needs. No more guessing. So tracking is, is a tool. So use that tool and see. And maybe if you feel like tracking is not for you, maybe that method that you use is not for you. So try another one. So let's talking about uh, tracking methods. Let's see if I have, um, so tracking can help you to reach your goals. But again, along with working with identifying triggers, uh, what is the self-sabotage, the roadblocks, all those things that I'm covering on my group coaching, by the way. So you have to use the tracking, but it's not like, okay, because you can be tracking, 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 tracking and not seeing any results, right? So when you track, you also have to be working on things like I'm saying, like habits, like eating slowly, mindfully, identifying like um, when, you know, what things are triggered you, triggering you. Or also another thing about tracking that I see very often is like under eating. I have clients that say, I eat a lot. And then when they track, I usually say, just track for a week, just for a week, one week, seven days, without, without changing anything. And then with that data, we can see and, and say, oh, I've been skipping uh, breakfast or I don't have any, any um, snack. I feel hungry all the time. And you realize that some of the clients, most of my clients, they are under eating. Because the, the fear of, oh, if I eat this, I'm going to, I'm going to put some weight. If I, if I do more carbs, when you are tracking, you have the data and that, that gives you that freedom to say, oh my goodness, I need to eat more and I need to eat more nutrients. Isn't that amazing? Once you get it, you don't have to keep tracking the rest of your life if you don't want to. So let's start uh, talking about I'll give you some methods of tracking. So the first one is a one that probably uh, is, you know, apps, using an app. And the most common over there, there is so many apps out, out there, but my fitness pal. So when, with an app, the good thing about the app is the app is going to give you, you just put your food, you love your food, and it's going to tell you exactly how many uh, protein, carbs, and, and fats. Once you, when you know you have your nutrition plan, you know that you have to reach like a 120 grams of protein. You just love what you eat in the app, it's going to tell you how you are doing. So that's an app that I know that it takes some time to get used to and learn how to use the app. Like everything else in, in life takes some time. Then another method is uh, hand portion guidelines. 
So, and I post two uh, reels this week about how to track using your hands. Okay, let's see how that works. So I have um, an, on, on my program, my group uh, program with my clients, I'm gonna add some PDFs and examples of how to use your hands. But I'm gonna show you today really quickly. So for, for protein, we use our palm. This is about three to four ounces of protein. Okay, like uh, let's say chicken, three, four ounces of protein is one serving. So if you do like, if for a woman, probably one serving, men two servings. And also, uh, so this is the pan. For veggies, for veggies we use the fist. Fist is about one cup, okay? And that provides, could be like zucchini, cauliflower, uh, broccoli, um, uh, uh, lettuce, spinach, kale. That provides like one, uh, let's say one cup of uh, zucchini, like about 20, maybe, well, 20, uh, zucchini probably is less um, carbohydrates. I'm gonna say like probably 20, 30 grams of carbohydrates. Um, no, no, no with veggies. Veggies are lower, those veggies are lower. With carbohydrates like, like pasta, rice, um, beans, we use our <laughs> cup hand, and that is about half cup. Rice, half cup of rice is about 20 grams of carbohydrates, more or less, okay? Then for fats, we use our thumb. Thumb is one tablespoon, let's say almonds, is about 10 almonds. It's, it provides about seven to 12 grams of fats. And then for oils, we measure with the, 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 the tip of our, our, our thumb, and that's about one teaspoon, okay, of fats. And again, one tablespoon is about seven to 12 grams of uh, fats. But if you use an app, the app, that's everything for you. Then, if you use your hands and you use cups, measurement cups uh, for uh, hands and measurement cups, also, if you wanna use a, a foot scale, it's another method of tracking, I use this just for protein. If you wanna measure your um, chicken, uh, turkey, uh, red meat, uh, fish, your tofu, tempeh if you are a uh, vegan so there are so many <laughs> uh, super cheap full uh, scales uh, and this one <laughs> tells you even your macros like you put your your food here and you, the code and tells you how many carbs fats and proteins that food has so super simple but of course um, what else what else do we have you can use piece of paper like I said, for a few days, just write everything that you eat without changing anything. Be honest, this is for you. So it's gonna it's gonna give you like when you are when you see when you don't think, oh I feel. No, not feeling. You see what is going on on, on, the, on the piece of paper. The thing is that you need to bring the piece of paper everywhere you go if you eat out. And also I use with clients pictures. I tell them, if you don't have time to write down, if you don't have time to track log on your on your uh, phone, take a picture, send it to me, and uh, that, that breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, everything, pictures also can give you an idea if you are uh, deficient in a nutrient, if you are eating the, the protein that you need, carbs, etc, etc, etc. So these are some of the methods that um, I use my, with my, myself, with my clients, and once you get, you get used to, honestly, you can see a plate and knowing exactly if you need, you know, if you are eating enough protein, carbs, fats, etc. And some things that you don't need to track, like all the green leafy foods, like spinach, kale, lettuce, just put those food veggies in abundance, and and. And, and you don't need to obsess and, and, and track everything. And that's one of the things, not everything is positive about tracking, and I'm aware of that. Sometimes when we track what I see, we can get super obsessive. It's something that um, working with clients, I can, I can see that or, or, or in myself. If you caught yourself by being super obsessive, maybe you need to take a break, maybe you need to take a step back and just work also along with tracking again work with building habits, the habit of eating slowly, oh, better than tracking, the habit of eating mindfully, stopping when you are 80% satisfied, learning what foods trigger you overeating, and maybe removing those foods for a while. So see, tracking is just a tool. 
but we need to use that tool along with all the other things that are gonna create those long-term results and it's a lifestyle. At the end, you need to find the way that fits your lifestyle again and the way that you see yourself a method that you see yourself doing it long term is not overwhelming doesn't create more obsession and anxiety and those are things that you need to check with yourself being in tune and aware and bring awareness of what the method that you are using so no more dieting no more depriving yourself on the contrary sometimes tracking can help you to eat more and eat the right things that your body needs, the nutrients that your body needs. So this is what I have for today about tracking. Let me see if I'm, oh, okay, about 15 minutes. And let's finish doing an amazing uh, high protein smoothie. So I'm gonna move my tracking methods away for a, for a little bit. And we need a blender. I have it, a blender cup. And the ingredients for this mango creamy smoothie are one cup or half cup of mango, half cup or one cup of, uh, this is a cauliflower rice, by the way. Then we need half tablespoon of um, coconut butter, raw coconut butter, uh, cinnamon to put it on top, and uh, cocoa powder. I forgot the cocoa powder. Let me grab it. Let me grab it. My cocoa powder. Oh my goodness. I forgot this. Cocoa powder, I have this, is 100%, well, it's in the, it's in the, <laughs> in the camp, it's 100% cocoa powder. So this smoothie, you can make it dairy-free, gluten-free, sugar-free. And I have half cup of almond milk, but you can use a, a whole milk or the milk that you like. And protein, this is a plant-based protein powder. And if you can have whey protein, even better, it's one of the best uh, proteins um, out there whey protein and if you can have it have it okay so we are going to start first with liquids when we make smoothies we're going to start with the liquids because if we put the frozen of the protein on 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 on, on the bottom can get stuck there when we are blending it so first liquids and then we are going to put let's see the the cauliflower rice one cup of this is half cup and Mango, this is frozen, but if you don't you don't have frozen, you can put it at mm, no frozen. <laughs> and um, half tablespoon of this raw coconut butter. This is gonna make this smoothie creamy and so yummy. Oh, I love this butter. But if you don't have coconut butter, you can add any other butter, almond butter, uh, peanut butter, so those are all great but this is like gives you such sweet uh, taste on the smoothie and I, I really like it protein I'm gonna put a full scoop of protein this is gonna provide about 20 grams of protein okay stagger that you know protein I always say protein the three macros protein fats and carbohydrates protein has the highest thermogenic effect that means you know when you eat when we eat food our body burns calories digesting, metabolizing, absorbing those foods. So uh, protein burns the more calories, the most. So when we want to lose weight or lose fat, increase your high, your protein, it's going to help you to feel fuller, longer, and help us, help us to burn more calories. And protein, well, I have talked about that in other videos, the protein in, is, you know, interferes in every function on your body. So, but I don't want to talk about the benefits of protein today. Cocoa powder, this is about half tablespoon. If you're a, a chocolate lover, add some more. And I think that that's, that's it. So right now I have half cup of almond uh, uh, milk. If I need more, if it's super thick, I will add more, but it's better to start with just less and then add a little bit more. And as I just always say, cover your ears. I'm going to make a little bit of noise with this uh, blender, but this is life, right? And let's start. I can... It's, it's working, it's working. smoothies super thick so I don't want to add more milk yet let's see <laughs> come on 
everybody, you can do it. The mango is super frozen. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more milk. See, that's oh my goodness, this is gonna be. You can you can eat this with with a spoon. That's what I like. You can make ice cream with this. Oh, that sounds really good. Maybe I can put this in the freezer and make ooh mango, mango and chocolate oh. ice cream. We are almost done. We are almost done. Maybe it's not my. Uh, I don't want to add more milk. I like it very, very thick. Okay, those things that happen. So probably one cup of milk. If this, I know you like. Very little because I, you know, like I said, I like it. Some people like it super liquid, like my husband, but me, no. Now, there you go. Awesome. Now it's working. Good. I'm gonna grab my glass. This. Okay. And now, let's see if we can enjoy this smoothie with spoon or straw. <laughs> this is how I like it. I like it super, super, super thick. And see the things that I didn't... Okay, yes, yeah, I like it this way. See? Thick. <laughs> but if you like it more liquid, just keep blending. Keep... Oh! Life. I don't want you to see this. I make a mess. I make a mess. <laughs> I promise. This is, this is something only in life happens when you are life. So this is my smoothie. You can also uh, add on top some cinnamon and uh, whipped cream. <laughs> I love it because I made a mess. I hope you don't see what I made here. I'm gonna try it before I say goodbye. Mm. Very good. You have to try it. Add more milk because this is super thick. But mango creamy smoothie tastes like sweet. Tastes uh, super creamy. Oh, a great snack right now. It's 10:20. Perfect time for a snack. So this is Elena Rivera Galaz. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being, being there. And if you are interested in check out the 10 weeks uh, online program, I'm going to put the link so you can join the, the wait list. And for now, join my Facebook private group for women. It's free. It's called Macros and Habits Beats the Diets. I will see you next time. And I'm going to stay here enjoying my uh, smoothie. Half of the smoothie is on my counter table. Bless. Bye. I'm gonna stop Facebook first and then Instagram.